Hey, it's Richard Geller. This is the key in this video to getting your loan mod proposal accepted by a lender. And if you miss this stuff, you're just totally going to be lost because the lenders are going to be applying this criterion and you're not going to understand what they're doing. If you understand this, you have a good chance of getting your lender to accept your loan mod proposal or your client's loan mod proposal. I want to caution you here that you want to stick to honesty. What we're talking about here is facts and packaging the facts in the best way possible, but we're not talking about lying or exaggerating or misrepresenting. We never want to encourage you to do that. We want to be very honest with the lenders. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the monthly payments that count. First of all, credit card minimum payments absolutely count. Now that is an area where if the debt to income ratio is, is just doesn't work, if it's too high, you might be able to get your client to contact their credit card companies and lower the minimums. Um, also, some lenders don't necessarily look at all credit cards. Many of them look at what's on the credit report. So um, although you really want to be complete and honest, um, the lenders may actually only look at what's on the credit card report and some credit cards for example business credit cards don't show up on personal credit report uh, necessarily car payments they definitely will be uh, they'll count as long as the car is used for personal use if it's a company car uh, or used for business it doesn't count you want to count your hope for mortgage payment okay whatever the mortgage payment is that you're hoping to get they also count property tax and they also count property insurance so those are, uh, as long as they're expressed as a monthly cost, those count. So those are examples of monthly payments that do count, okay? Um, very, very easy to understand. So let's go to the next section, which would be the expenses that um, don't count, even though these are real expenses. As far as debt to income ratio goes, the lender doesn't care about them. So first of all, food. You gotta live, but that's not the lender doesn't care about that as far as debt to income ratio goes. Your cable bill, your daycare, how much you spend on a car uh, or a truck, if it's used for business, is not going to go into your debt to income ratio. Tuition expenses. Um, let's say you borrow money from mom and you have to pay her back. I'm sorry, mom isn't a credit card, so the lender doesn't care about that. It doesn't count for your debt to income ratio. Okay, none of this counts. So let's look at a typical scenario to see how it might work for you or your client. And so I've got a little bit of a simple financial dealio here. So let's look at that. So first of all, we're talking about two, um, two credit cards right here. We're talking about uh, about $12,000 altogether. We're talking about minimum payments of $120 and uh, $280. So as far as the lender is concerned, the, the, these minimum payments are what count to the debt to income ratio. Now that we've got a food monthly, does that count? No. Cable. Does it does it count? Correct. It does not. Does child care count for debt to income ratio? Yes or no? Exactly. It does not. What about other living expenses? Things that we have to do to get by? Sorry, that doesn't count. Clothing. Does that count for debt to income ratio? No, it doesn't. Uh, I will say that if your client has a department store debt and they pay a monthly fee uh, to a retailer, uh, do a department store, that's going to count, but in this case we're not assuming that. Now, we have an existing mortgage. Does that count? Yes, it does, but we're going to hope for a new payment. So we'll redo this in a second, but we'll keep it up there. Property tax of $300. Does your municipality or your county allow you to negotiate your property tax? I doubt it, so therefore it counts. What about property insurance? Uh, your, your property insurance here, about 60 bucks a month, it counts. Okay, now you notice we've got total payments right now of almost $6,000 a month. And let's look at the income side. $4,000 for a first job, and we've got $6,000 for a second job. These are gross incomes. So that's a total of $4,600. Our debt to income ratio is way out of whack. We, we're looking at a number that's way too high. Okay, so let's, let's, let's um, make these figures correct because we've actually counted things in here that should not be counted. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete some things that should not be in there. So go with me here. We're deleting food, we're deleting cable, we're deleting childcare, deleting miscellaneous expenses, deleting clothing. All right, now look at the debt to income ratio. Now we're more like 75%. Okay, we're getting there. What we've got to do is we've got to be at 50%. We can do that a couple of different ways. We could have the client call Chase and Bank of America and arrange for lower payments. Let's say that they arrange for a $200 payment with Chase. And let's say that they arrange for an $80 payment with Bank of America. Okay, that's going to help us a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk to the lender. Maybe the lender can give us a, a $1,500 
uh, a month uh, payment for a few uh, years or five years. Ooh, now we're at 47%. Now, most lenders will accept a debt-to-income ratio of 47%. Uh, not all of them will. Some of them will insist on 38%. However, uh, if that were the case here, this payment would have to be down to more like $1,000 and uh, or $1,100 looks like. See, now we could uh, we could meet the standards of a very strict lender that's wanting to see a debt to income ratio of 38%. So this is an idea of how debt to income ratio is calculated. What we did is we looked at expenses that count. We looked at things like credit card minimums, car payments used for personal cars, a hope for a new mortgage payment, property tax and insurance, expenses and monthly fee. We looked at expenses that do not count like food, cable, daycare, and so forth. And we looked at a very simple uh, sheet where we just add up all the, the debt payments, including the hope for mortgage payment. We add up the income. We simply divide okay, the debt to the income, and that's where we get our percentage. And we want to keep this under 50%, and for some lenders it might be even 38%. I hope this has been helpful. This is Richard Geller. This is um, uh, what you get, some of what you would get in our Loan Mod Magic course. And uh, we're having a um, uh, tell a seminar for people that own the course that can ask questions. We're going to present a lot of new information. Uh, it's um, it's free to those people who already own Loan Mod Magic who are members of the Free and Clear Club Silver Inner Circle. And if you are not a member and you want to try it out, simply get Loan Mod Magic uh, absolutely on a 365-day money-back guarantee. And um, you know, any, uh, you'll be able to attend on this, this, uh, this seminar. I will look forward to speaking with you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.